Coming into 2016, we were looking for a new hoe to represent in CSGO. Um, and you found one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Shazab Shazam Khan, and I'm team captain of Optic Gaming CSGO. I've been trying to expand into Counter-Strike for the past like six months, and just recently opportunities started to pop up left and right. I was a little bit, I felt a little bit pressured into stepping into, into, into the scene. The decision that I, that I was going to have to make was pretty much to go against the Optic culture. I was going to have to acquire a team from Europe and have little to no contact with them. And that, to me, that didn't sit well, but I was willing to do it because I wanted to expand into that. Weeks into the negotiation, you know, it, it, the, the opportunity went away, right? And when that happened, since it was out of my hands, I felt a little bit more like calm. You know, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take my time. Out of nowhere, an NA team became available. These guys. And I was like, yes, right? So the second that, that, that this guy's team, and I met him, I met him at, uh, at once at X Games, um, Aspen. Aspen. He was playing under C9 at the time. I was an offer on C9 when I met Hex in, a in X Games Aspen, and uh, again when I met him at UMG DC. So the roster of Optic Gaming is Daps, who's our in game leader, Stanislaw and Rush, who are entry fraggers, Naf, who is our lurker, and then myself, Shazam, the offer. We're a relatively newer team. We formed at the end of the last summer. But in that amount of time, we've accomplished quite a lot in the NA scene. We managed to get top three in both American leagues. We placed top four at Sevo Land, and recently won the Road to Vegas qualifier. We're actually the only North American roster to not change any players. I mean, we all love playing with each other. We have a long history with each other. So, Naf, Keith, he's a young gun. He just recently turned 18. He's kind of the shy one, but when he gets comfortable, he's He's a joker. Daps, or Damien, he's probably the most monotonous person you'll ever meet, but he's also a joker. But we still have a very low on HP. Daps, one HP, and the errant shot will take him down. He worked it into a one-on-one. -on -one. All stacks has to do it. Oh my him, god! And he can't do it! Daps will get it one HP! So Stanislaw, he's probably like the biggest hard worker on the team. I've never played with anyone that has work ethic like he does. This dude will stay up all night watching demos and create most of our strats. So there's Rush, or Will. He's our really, really aggressive entry fragger, and he's just like an all-around god at CS. And then there's me, Shazam, or Shazeb. I'm the upper for the team, and I'm also the uh, kind of guy that keeps everyone in check and the charisma high for people. I would, I'm not gonna push content creation on them as much as I would the people at the Scuff House, but they said that they're interested in exploring that. So that little leeway right there is gonna make me wanna be like, fucking do content. You know, uh, obviously as, as long as it doesn't jeopardize the, the practice, it does, as long as it doesn't jeopardize like their position in the game, position, position in the space, I think that we can find a very healthy balance. And uh, up until now, I don't think it's been done. Like I've been researching on YouTube and there's a couple of channels that are doing a really good job in creating CSGO content, so uh, it's basically going to be up to them and, and, and us like trying to shoot ideas off of each other and see what works and what doesn't, and just implement simple things that we've done in the past. We're looking into having these dudes move out here. Are you, are you ready for this lifestyle? It's cold. Hell yeah, I got my jacket on right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to move them out here, and then we're going we're gonna to do a lot of content creation. We're going to do a lot of uh, intermingling between the, the Scuff house and the CSGO house. Um, it's a work in progress. We still haven't found a house. We still have. We're still looking, but we're gonna try to make this happen like as soon as possible. Because the sooner that we can get these dudes interacting with the dudes here, I mean, think about it, right? Crimson's gonna go nuts, right? He already plays enough CS:GO. You're gonna have formal here, so he's gonna be like, yeah, I want to play CS:GO, and it's gonna be good. So I don't know. We have, we're, in my head, I already have like a whole bunch of concepts planned out as to as to how I want to approach this. Uh, it's just a matter of executing them. Coming into a big brand like Optic is huge for us as as a team and individually. Uh, we're all players that have been in the scene for a very long time. Coming in 2016, we were looking for a new home to represent. And with CSGO getting as big as it is, and with NA specifically, this coming year with like, you know, the TV leagues and such, you know, we're, we're getting, we're getting quite a lot of offers that we didn't have before. And honestly, it was a pretty easy choice to go with Optic. Uh, like the brand speaks for itself. I've met Hex before plenty of times. Um, Everything felt so genuine, so.
Yeah, for for me, like stepping into the into the, into the Counter Strike space, expansion has it's it's always a part of my of the plan, right? That's that everybody does that. It, it's part of it. But people were a little bit like rushy with me and 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 wanted me to do things on their time. And I've I've never been a big fan of doing things when people want me to do them. I want to do them on my own because I I know what it is. I know what reality is, right? For them, it's a lot easier because they all they see is the video on YouTube or the stream or what whatever's going on. So they don't really know the ins and outs of, of the decision making, right? So for me, it was a whole bunch of stuff, right? Like I, I felt as though like it was the perfect time because the TV league was about to happen. Uh, NA Counter-Strike was becoming a little bit more, more popular uh, and those team available, right? So it's like all the stars kind of aligned for me. Uh, luckily, it was somebody that I'd already met, somebody that I that I liked, and that I saw. You know, this dude's pretty good on camera. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> people say that I missed the boat on, on acquiring a couple, you know, more teams. But for me to follow the optic culture, which is more important to me, to follow the way that we do things. It's, it's just, for me, it's going to be a lot easier to have these dudes right down the street, right? To have them be a part of our daily lives, right? To, to interact with the people here already. That's going to, it's like a recipe for success, right? It's like, we're just going to try to follow the same things that we've already done and try to replicate them, um, but in a different game. So this Thursday, these guys are going to be, and this is what I mean by stars aligning, right? Because I was already going to go to CES in Vegas. Uh, and these guys were going to be there to compete for a guaranteed spot in the Turner League. The Turner League is going to be a televised league. Uh, I think they're going to put it on Fridays after like uh, NBA or something. I don't really know. I don't know the rules. All I know is that it's going to be on TV. So for me, it was like, wow, it's like the perfect time, right? I'm stepping into the space. They're about to be on TV. Something that I've, that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, and, and, you know, the opportunity presented itself. And, and these guys were available. I was available. We're going to be in Vegas. So the future for us is, is going to be a bright one, I think, uh, especially for the, for the CSGO division. Because what we're about to do has never been done in CSGO. Um, and although the main focus is going to be to provide a place for these guys to train as best as they can so they can show up to an international event and, and, and do a good showing. Uh, I think that that's, that's going to be priority number one. But priority number two is obviously to continue, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here, uh, but to continue to do and follow the optic path uh, in, in, into everything that we do. Uh, you know, it's fun. Uh, sponsors love it, and we have, like, an amazing time doing it. And, and as soon as these guys move down here, we are going to be, like, paintballing. We're going to go to, like, I don't know, get ice cream and stuff together and milkshakes. You know what I'm saying? You like milkshakes? Sounds good. Yeah, I love milkshakes. What's your favorite milkshake? Uh, chocolate. Oh, that's gross. I, 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 I go with the banana raspberry or strawberry, strawberry I, banana. I ain't that picky though. You know you can get chocolate everywhere. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I'd love to start doing content. I know that's something like uh, a lot of like CSGO in general lacks. Um, there's there's not a lot of storylines that players have or like show for themselves, and I know my team definitely definitely wants to uh, start doing things like that. Optic will enable us to do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been doing it for such a long time. We know how to do it. So it's just pretty much guiding them in the same direction that we, you know, that we guide everybody else that comes into into the team. Um, so again, I'm very excited. I don't have anything else to say unless you do. Um, but I think that that I'm I'm ready to get to work on this. Uh, I can't wait to have these guys out here in Illinois, Chicago. Um, we're gonna have some fun, and we're gonna do it well, because that's what we do.